Hello. We are going to do our daisy bowl or plate class tonight. Just waiting for everybody to jump on. And I'm going to give a little public service announcement. Um, please don't put acrylic paints on your pottery if you are doing kits at home. Because acrylic paints on pottery means that we can't fire the pieces. Um, and that because um, it'll burn off. And that means that it's not going to be food safe and it's not going to be uh, water resistant. So please, if you pick up pottery to go, only use the paints that we have given you. Do not use acrylic paints, markers, pens, glitter. Please, 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 please. Okay, looks like everybody's jumping on here. This is good. I was just giving a public service announcement um, <clears throat> while I was waiting for y'all. And hopefully um, everybody did their homework and pre-painted the front of their piece with some white paint. Hi, Anna. Hi, Jan. All right. Woo! Um, okay, so um, in your kits, you should have gotten a pattern, which hopefully you have also cut all your pieces out and are ready with those. Um, fat brush, skinny brush, sponge, paper towels. These are not for your hands. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Danielle. These are not for your hands. These are part of our um, technique that we're going to use. So if you want paper towels for your hands or whatever, go grab some now. And you should also have um, your paints, a black writer bottle, and I do ask that you please return this. I know we haven't had you returning paint brushes or anything. This I need you to return with the extra tips. Don't throw the tips away your paint colors, um, and you're going to need a bowl of water. So I will give everybody like 30 seconds to get some paper towels for your hands because you don't want to use the ones that I put in your kit. They're part of the process. And a bowl of water. Okay. <clears throat> and here is my bowl of water. And every, oh, and you probably, and you should have had a plastic plate too. So if you didn't, I think I got one for everybody, but if not, get yourself a plate. Um, as well. All right, so we are going to get started. Um, so this uses our paper masking technique. Um, I know Jen and Danielle have done that. Um, I don't know how many other people have done it. Um, but basically what you do is that the pieces that you cut out mask the paint so that you could paint around it. So that's why you had to pre-paint this. So now what you're going to do is, um, is we're going to wet this and we're going to put it down wherever we want it. If you have the little cutouts, it's really easy because you can just dip them right in the water and just put them where you want. The bigger one, I'm going to attempt to do that, but I think what I'm going to do, if you have the bigger one, um, just wet the pottery a little bit with your big brush. Um, generally where you're going to put it, okay? Um, so go right over your wet paint a little bit. You don't have to do this if you had the small ones because they're small and you're going to hydrate them really well. Okay, so I am going to, my bowl is big enough that I'm going to attempt to try and get this whole thing kind of wet by doing this. And you just want to be careful not to rip it. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get all my little petals here. And I'm going to generally put it where I want it. All right. And then... I'm going to try and smooth this out a little. This may, this may not have been the best idea, but we'll make it work. I 
think what I need to do is like put one side down. There we go. Put one side down and sort of get the wrinkles out a little bit. So the most important thing is that the edges are really sealed down um, to the pottery. Okay. So oops, I have one that's ripping here, but that's okay. No big deal. So this is going to take a minute and I want you to, you know, kind of, so um, I'm going to show you in a minute because, because I have, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I have a couple wrinkles. That does not matter. What does matter is that the edges of every one of these, anywhere that it meets the pottery is really sealed down. So I'm going to go around with my sponge. Okay, I'm going to wet my sponge, and I'm going to really make sure that that whole piece of paper, and I'm dabbing, don't rub, because if you rub, you're going to rip, okay? So I'm just really making sure that that whole thing is really stuck to the plate, and that there are no edges with bubbles or anything like that or, that are up. Now, if you have a little bit of white paint left over from when you um, put everything down, I'm trying to, sorry, I want to make sure that I can, um, hey Lou, um, I want to make sure that I can see all the comments. If you have a little bit of white paint left, you can very thinly just sort of put a sealing coat, and I'm very thin, um, on the edges of your paper maskings, um, whether it be the little one or the big ones. So you could just put a super thin coat, and what that does is that's just gonna sort of seal the edge and make sure that there's paint at the edge. But if you don't have any white paint left over from when you, um, from when you did your painting. There's a schmutz in there. Hang on a sec. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, if you don't have any paint left over, it's no big deal. Um, this is just like a little extra added insurance. Okay. So I'm just, and I'm not doing the center. I'm not doing like on the paper. I'm just doing the edges, right? I'm just doing like where the petals are just to seal those up a little. All right, so I'm going to just put that down. All right, so I know a bunch of you have, um, have the small um, daisies. Um, and that that's going to take you a little bit longer. So um, when you are done, just chime in, uh, put a comment that you're finished so that I know I can move on, okay? Um, and for those of you who missed my public service announcement earlier, um, if you are grabbing pottery to do at home, please don't use acrylic paints or glitter or glitter glue. Um, we've had an extraordinary amount of pottery come back lately that people have used acrylics on, and it basically ruins your pottery because um, it burns off in the kiln, it leaves nasty marks on your pottery. If you try and paint over it, it often will resist the paint. Um, the glaze doesn't want to go on it. It means that your plates and your bowls and your mugs are not food safe. So if you didn't get a color that you wanted, just let us know, okay? Um, so that we, you know, we're, we have not limited colors of paints. We haven't stopped anybody from asking for more paint. Just please, please, please don't use acrylics, okay? There, that's my service announcement. All right, so let's see. Melanie is done with hers. Danielle and Jennifer, how are you coming along? 
I know you guys had the little ones, I think. Try and make sure that I see all the comments. Hi, Steph. Uh, done. Oh, that's fine if you paint it over in the middle of some of them. That's fine. All right. So, looks like everybody is pretty well, although I have, Danielle has not chimed in yet. Danielle's a, a, one of my regulars, and I love her, and she's a perfectionist. <laughs> so, I want to make sure that she's done before I, uh, before I move on. Done, done. All right. Okay. Danielle, I'm crossing my fingers. You're done, sweetheart. All right. So, the next part is where we are actually creating the background. Um, and this is a fun little technique. Um, so what we are gonna do um, is I have, um, I decided to do two colors. So if you have one color, two colors, um, however many colors. Oh no, Anne! <laughs> All right, Anne, you may have to, um, because if you, did you, Anne, did you pre-paint yours at least? Had you already had that part done? Um, hi, Heather. I have to respond to you too, Heather. Um, and if you, um, just, just keep going, like, you know, cut it out, whatever. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I know there's extra colors, Jen. Um, the extra colors, there's there's yellow and um, and a coral color. Those are for your centers. Just put that aside. So right now we just need the color that you're going to do your background color in. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, good. And I'm glad you painted the two coats. So just cut out, start going. You could catch up or you can rewatch it later or just watch the video and see. It's super easy. All right. So if you have two colors, um, you could pour a little bit out of each color, um, sort of, uh, away from each other. Cause we're going to thin these paints out a little bit. Okay. Um, if you have one background color, then just pour some of that on your, um, on your plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my big brush here to drip some water onto those background colors so that I thin them out. You don't want them, I'm not making them super duper watery, but I do want them thinned out a little bit. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you guys could sort of see how like consistency it's it's you know it's still fairly thick but it's not it's not super duper thick okay um just want it mm, you want it to move more than it normally does a little bit all right all right now what we are going to do and this is sort of a one coat kind of thing okay so, and I'm going to do this in sections so that the paint doesn't get a chance to dry. So we're going to need one of our paper towels and we're going to take some of the paint and we're going to paint an area and I am just really sort of slapping it on there, okay? Not being particular about it at all. And while that paint is wet, I'm going to take the paper towel and I'm gonna push it into the paint and I'm gonna lift it up. Nope, that did not work well. Hang on a sec. I don't think I had enough paint on there. All right, let me try that again. I think I pushed too hard with what I, yeah, there we go. Okay, don't push quite as hard as I did the first time. So. What we are attempting to do, and hopefully this will reflect or you'll be able to see it. Uh, let's see. Sort of catch. See how there's like some texture now from the paper towel? 
here's like little dots and ridges and things. And so you're just going to keep going. Like, because I'm doing this, I'm going to do two colors. I'm going to pick two, you know, I'm just going to pick random areas to lay the paint on. And I'm laying it on, you know, fairly thick, but I'm, but I had watered it down so that it stayed, um, so it stays wet. And then I'm using the paper towel. There we go. Oh, that one worked better. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you can see the texture of the paper towel. Careful about doing what I did, which was I pushed with my fingers. And so you can see where my fingers lifted it up. And so if you don't like that, just go back over it again and put the paper towel down. I think I'm going to use the palm of my hand this time. Oh, yeah, much better. So hopefully you can, can you, oh, there, I think that's a good angle that you guys can see. Okay. And you're just going to keep going around with coats of paint. <clears throat> and if you're doing all one color, then you can just, you know, work your way around your plate. If you're doing two colors, then, and I'm going, woo, I'm going over my paper mask. You want to make sure that you go over your paper mask. Like I should have made sure that there was a little paint right there. Um, you want to make sure that you have gone over the, the paper so that, um, when you lift it, the design is still there. So I'm going to put down a paper. I'm going to use my thumb. I mean, use my palm. There we go. All right. And I'm just going to keep on going like this. I think I'll do one more section of purple, maybe right here. There we go. So I'm hoping you guys can see like the texture that it's leaving behind. Okay. And then since I did two colors, I'm going to wash my brush out. And I'm going to do, and some of my two colors I'm going to overlap a little bit. We'll see what happens, what that looks like when it fires up. And I didn't like the way that that little area turned out, so I'm just throwing some more paint over it and just hitting it with the paper towel again. And let's see. And I put my paintbrush right down in my purple. Let's see. Give some color. Can you get it on the flowers? Yes, absolutely. You could go right over the flowers. Should we do more than one coat? Um, nope, you don't have to unless there was like an area that you didn't like the way that it turned out. Then you can absolutely come back um, and do another coat over the top of it. But one coat will be sufficient. I keep using my fingertips and that's like that I know that using my fingertips is a bad thing so and yeah I keep doing it 
because you tend to press with uneven pressure with your fingertips and you literally can see your finger marks there. So you actually want to go over your flowers or your flower. You want to make sure that at least the edges of that, um, of that flower are, are covered in paint because when we take that off, you want to make sure that the area underneath is, um, is white, right? So if you don't cover over it, then it's not going to look like flour. I may have to mix myself up some more paint here. All right, I'm just inspecting to make sure that I did not miss, like, especially any of the little V's um, that I got all that. And let's see. Hey, Rosalie. Hi, Julia. Uh, some of my flowers came up when I dabbed with the paper towel. Um, use your sponge and try and. Um, stick the the flowers back down um because we're trying not to get anything on the white um if worse comes to worse and you pull it up and there's color under there you can always um uh take it off with a, with the sponge or some q-tips and touch it up with white it'll be fine nothing is ever bad we can always fix everything um you know, that's what I tell, if you ask some of my regulars, like, what my thing is in, in the studio, I always say, like, you know, as long as you don't throw it on the floor, we can probably fix it. Um, unless you paint it in acrylic paints. I'm sorry, I'm going to harp on that today because um, I just could not believe the number of pieces that came in um, with acrylic paints on them, which has never, ever happened before. Um, I don't know what the deal was with this week, but... Um, so I'm just now going back and to get a little bit more randomness, I'm taking a little bit of the blue and adding it to some of the, uh, or sorry, a little bit of the purple and adding it in some random areas over some of the blue. And then I'm going to go with the blue and I'm going to add it, um, in some of the random areas over the purple, um, just to try and make it look a little more patchworky. I guess is the uh, what I'm what I'm going for. Although I'm almost out of blue paint, so I'm gonna give myself a little bit more blue paint here. There we go. And I just got whoops. Water that down a little bit. There we go. There. And I'm just going to randomize it over some of this. I know this looks like a hot mess right now, but it won't. <laughs> At least mine looks like a hot mess. But it will be cool when it's done. Where else do I want to go? I'm just right there. There we go. All right. All right. How's everybody um coming along here? Uh no, Anna, it wasn't any of yours, I don't think. 
can't. I'm just going to clean up my own mess here on my on my table a little bit. All right. So is everybody pretty close to having everything covered? Um, like having this this part of it done, right? So yeah, I know it looks like hot mess right now. I know it does, but it's supposed to. All right, and then what I'm gonna do, providing I can find my sponge, there we go. I'm gonna wet my sponge, um, and I'm going to just run along my edge to create a nice, clean, white edge, white border, okay? And I'll show you what this looks like in just a second. And I'm, I'm like overlapping it just a tiny bit. See how I have a nice, clean, white edge now, right? So what I did with that sponge, with the round side, the back side of the sponge, I just kind of folded it over like this. And I'm just running it across the edge of the plate to clean up the edge and give myself a nice clean white border. Okay, so I'm basically intentionally trying to pull the paint off. Alrighty, so. We should be at about this stage, okay? So I have a clean white border. I have my layer of paint with my texture all going on there. Hang on, checking in on my uh, comments here. Smell it still working. Do we do the entire thing or do we leave the middle open like yours? Oh, anywhere the paper is, other than making sure you get the edge, you don't have to do it. So this, is all paper, I, you don't have to go over that because we're gonna rip this paper off. So there wouldn't be any paint there anyway, okay? All right, so, um, so if you are, if you have things covered, good, if not, don't worry about it. But if you have things covered, now what you wanna do is you want to start peeling off all of your little daisies or your big daisy, whichever you did. I'm gonna show you what happens. And this is why it's called paper masking. Because once you peel it off, you have this nice clean palette, okay? So now you have this nice clean area where that was, okay? See, and I have, okay, so for example, I have this tiny little spot right there that got some paint on it, but because this is painted white, I can just literally take my nail and sort of scrape that away a little bit. There we go. All right. All right. Okay. Now, um, some of you have probably worked with writer bottles. You know what? I'm going to get this water out of my way. Hang on a sec. Because literally every time I have done one of these classes and I've had a bowl of water, I've hit the table and water goes everywhere. Okay, so hopefully some of you have worked with these before. Um, they are just a nice way to get a nice fine line. But I will tell you this. If you drag it in your existing paint, you are going to clog the tip. And then you're gonna to have to catch up later because you're gonna to have to soak it and blow on it and try and get it all unclogged. Um, I did give you an extra spare one or two, but um, I do suggest just A, trying to practice on a little piece of paper tip. Oh my God, tell me that the tip that I put on my own is clogged before I ever got started, which is always a possibility. Um, these ones, these yellow tips are the finer tips. They make a finer line, 
but um, but they do clog pretty easily. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use the back of my hand. So this lets you draw nice thin lines. Okay, so what I'm gonna do on my big one and oops, I gotta, hang on, I just schmutzied up my petal there with a drop of black paint. Um, okay, and the other thing with these um, is that, hang on, I'm just going to, because I got a little bit of black paint, so I'm just going to literally touch up my white. There we go. Okay, um, the other thing with this is that every time you turn it upside down, you want to squeeze it out on something before you squeeze it on your project, because it gets a little air bubble in here, and it can spit. Um, if you don't like make sure that that air bubble is out so now what I'm going to do is I am going to loosely draw with this a circle now the the beauty of this design if you looked at the original is that it's skippy and jumpy okay the 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 parts around the flower and stuff are the lines are very skippy and jumpy. You are not trying to be perfect here. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to go around this circle that I just did in the center with a second set intentionally making it sort of jumpy. And I'm wiping off my tip and I'm trying not to, I'm trying to sort of stay up above the paint. Okay, so now I've drawn the center of my flower. All right, could have gone, could have gone north a little, but that's fine. So that's going to be my center. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline, and again, jumpy is fine. That was a little squishy. I'm going to outline each one of my petals. And I want to show you because I want you to see how I am not aiming for perfection here. The scratchier it looks to me, the better it looks. Okay, see, it's jumpy, it's doubled up, it's scratchy. Um, that doesn't matter right so I'm just loosely and quickly going over all of my petals and like I said if you um, if you ride sort of above the paint or above the plate a little almost like let it drop onto it or, or um, drip down is going to um, stop your your writer bottle from getting all clogged okay <laughs> Danielle says she's not aiming for perfection on this one I'm so glad to hear it There we go. I think I clogged it. Oh, there we go. If you keep wiping it off, um, even if it clogs, you should be able to squeeze the clog out, hopefully. Um, but I don't know if you can see how quickly I'm just running around this, right? I am not I'm not being picky about it at all. all. Right, so now I'm about halfway done. Okay. And so if you have the little guys, you're going to do this on each little guy. If you have the big guy, you're going to do this on the big guys. Ooh. 
May have done my, may have my. And what you don't want to do, if it clogs, don't do it over your plate because you can push that whole, um, that whole tip right off. You don't want to do that. Um, and if it does, like mine has clogged. Um, if you, if it clogs, um, you can try and um, um, shake it. If, if you've gone through both of the tips that I've given you, um, you can try and shake it in your bowl of water a little bit. Um, but if you don't get around to finishing all of them, um, I can give you more tips or we can, we can um, fill it in for you at the studio. Um, because they do they just they clog that's what they do and if you in the end if you end up with one that you really hate like I kind of hate the one that I just did so um, what I will do once it is dry is I'm going to actually come in with either the back of my paintbrush or my nail or whatever, and I'm going to scrape away that what that black. If I have to, I will use my sponge um, and wash it away if it leaves any heavy residue, and then um, touch up the white. Okay, so that's part of the reason to. There's two reasons for pre-painting everything. Um, one is that the paper masking technique will only work if you already have paint on the surface because that's what the paper mask is adhering to. Um, and second is that um, as long as you have a coat of paint, you can fix mistakes for the most part, I mean, unless it's something really super horrendously bad. Um, but I like to think that for the most part we can fix stuff. All right, so there is my finished plate. This is the one that I messed up on and I'm going to scrape off when it's dry and touch up my white paint. Okay, let me see. How's everybody doing? Um, yeah, Anna, just, um, so, um, with your sponge, you can, you can wash it away, um, and then touch up the white. Um, and we're going to actually put the color in the center too. Um, I'm just waiting for my lines to dry a little bit. And we're like three quarters of the way get done here, guys. This is another one of those projects that's super fast um, and super easy. So I have a couple areas I could see where as I was going around, I kind of dug in with my finger. Um, so I'm just touching up a little bit of my white on those areas. All right. How's everybody doing? Are we close? Hi, Donna, my sister-in-law. Hello. Um, are we close to everybody being, um, having their flowers done? Thumbs up, thumbs down, something? Yeah, no, maybe. All right. Um, I am going to wipe my excess paint off of my plate here because we need to do one more thing. Where's my okay. right. I'm gonna wipe my plate off and I have to go over there because that's where I put my water. I want to rinse my bra my um sponge out. All right. So, um, 
So flower centers. Um, we are going to do what is called um, double loading um, or I don't know. It's called a bunch of things. So I'm going to put that corally pink on my plate and I'm going to put my yellow on my plate. Now, if you have the big plate or the big flower, you're going to use your, your sponge to do this. If you have small flowers, you're going to use your small brush. Okay. Um, let me, I think there's a lot more people who had small flowers. So I'm going to demonstrate this for small flowers first. So what you're going to do is you're going to put yellow paint on half of, well, all right, that's a little more than half, but, and then you're going to put pink paint or the peach paint so that what you end up with, can you see that? Is it's half and half. Okay, hopefully you could see that. And then I'm going to demonstrate on my hand because I don't have it. No, you know what? I could demonstrate on here. Maybe you'll be able to see. You, where the center of your flower is, you're going to go in and you're going to twist so that, I know it's really hard to see, um, so that you're basically, what you're trying to do is get both colors at the same time to come onto your piece, okay? So I'm just twisting it like that. I don't know if you can really tell that both colors are there. Um, the other thing you can do is you can do just the white, or just, sorry, just the yellow, you know, make your center like that. And then while it's wet, take some of the pink and add it in over the top. Okay. You know, hard to see. Um, all right. So if you have a big one, you're essentially going to do the same thing. So you're going to load the, the round side of the um, sponge with some yellow. And then you're only going to do a part of it with the pink. And you're going to put it in the center. And you're spinning. Okay. So that you basically are laying down both colors. You need a little bit more yellow. And it's sort of easier to spin your dish than it is to spin your piece. It's to spin your sponge. So, hang on, almost done. All right, see what that did? Okay, so where the yellow was on it, it left it in the center, and where the peach was on it, it put it to the outside so that it created a, um, like a shadow um, without me having to actually paint it in. Okay. And to show you about fixing where I made my mistake there, let's see, what do I have? I can, I may have to just use my nail. All right, I'm just going to use my nail. Okay, so where I didn't like that, I used my nail and I scraped it, but now I'm back down a raw bisque, right? And everything else has white. And if I leave it like that, it's going to look like two different colors. So I'm going to take a little bit of my white. Oh, hang on, with a clean brush. I'm going to take a little bit of my white 
and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to touch that up. There we go. And once that is glazed and fired, no one will be the wiser. All right. Let's see. How's everybody doing? We got a couple of people, two, three flowers left, little flowers left. Okay. Um, I'm debating whether to do a second coat in that center. I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. I think I kind of like the, the bit of streakiness that it gave me. Um, so I think I'm going to leave that just the way it is. And I think I'm going to, that one that I, quote, fixed, um, I'm just going to, there we go. That's sort of the way I wanted it instead. Okay. So, um, and so now what I'm doing is like, I'm just looking around it and I'm going, do I want to, you know, are there any big gaps that I want to just add some of the more, some black back in or anything like that, that I don't like. But generally I think I'm pretty pleased with the way that this looks. And if you wanted to, if you did this design and you want to write in the middle, you can use the writer bottle to do that. Um, trying to think of something, uh, something, something, something clever. And I'm, I'm it's not coming to me. <laughs> But I'll, I'll think of something. I'll think of something between now and when I fire it. Um, but, so once you've done that, that's it. We're pretty much done. Um, so then you just need to bring it back to me at the studio. And, um, and I will fire it up for you. And they will be beautiful. Um, does anybody have any questions? Or was there anything that didn't make sense or anything like that. Um, I just want to make sure that you all like are getting what you what you're doing here. And please post pictures because I do you wipe the small centers with the paper towel. Um, no, no. You just, nope. Oh, you mean like, do you put any texture in them or anything? Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. You're just filling those in. You're just filling in centers to, with the, with the yellow and the peach color to give you a flower, a center flower, a, a center to your flower. There we go. I'll learn how to speak. Honestly, I will. Um, make sure you guys post pictures. I want to see how they turned out because um, I think almost everybody got different pottery pieces. So I'm really curious what they all look like. Um, can I make the petals a different color? Um, so here's the thing, Anna. To make the petals, I mean, you can after the fact. So like at this point, if you want to add color to those, absolutely. Um, if we had done that in the beginning, so say you, like if you had done, uh, if you had wanted, all your petals to be pink. The problem is, is you have to paint your whole plate in that color that the petal is going to be to put the paper mask down. So that means that you'd have a pink base instead of a white base that your background colors would go on. Um, so as long as you did it in a color that was light enough and wasn't going to conflict horribly with whatever color you put over the top, then you could do that. Um, secondarily is to, after you've removed the paper mask, come in and paint the colors that you want the petals to be. Um, but like I said, so say I had painted this whole thing pink so that my, my petals were pink. That means my petals were pink, where my center is is pink. And the whole background is pink. So then the colors where I have the purple and the blue right now, I'd maybe have to use like a dark purple 
and maybe have to do it in two coats um, to cover that pink. And, and because of the technique we're using, because we're doing this thing with the paper towels to try and get some texture, some of that pink would pop through anyway. So I hope that's a, um, I hope that's a decent exclam explanation. I can't, explanation. Oh my God, I can't talk tonight. Um, let's see, small daisies. In the picture, each petal is outlined in black. Were we supposed to do that? Yes, that's why you have this. Once you've once you've taken your so basically what I did here, you're doing in miniature on your daisies. Okay, so um, so you're just using your liner bottle to to go around every petal on every flower. So yeah, um, yep. So so every every daisy, whether it's big or small should essentially end up like that. So it should end up with black outlines around all the petals and a black outline in the center and a colored center. Okay. Hey, Marianne. I saw Mike Coppa today. Hope you all are doing good. Haven't seen you guys in forever. Uh, let's see. I got it. I will... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Danielle says that her daisies look like fried eggs. Why do your daisies look like fried eggs? Do they have petals? Because I don't know of fried eggs that have petals. You got to add your petals with the with the liner. I'm sure they don't look like fried eggs. They probably look like fried eggs because you probably haven't put all the lines in yet. So, so if you have your centers in, go around your centers with the black and then do all your petals in black. Answer me, Danielle. Yeah, that good? Is that why? You know we can fix anything. You know we can make it all work. Uh, why are your, why do you, so is it that you didn't put the black lines yet? They shouldn't look so, so, all right, let me, um, hang on. Um, okay, Laura's going to paint on her hand again. Oh my God, Julia used to do this, remember? Okay, so when you... Here we go. Okay. When you pulled off your um when you pulled off your paper mask, your daisies look like that, right? So then it sounds like maybe then you came in and you did your center, right? So that's why it looks like a fried egg. So now what you still need to do and I'm doing this with wet paint on the back of my hand. This is, this is a, this is a, a new demonstration technique, let me tell you. So now what you need to do is you need to come in with your liner bottle and go around each petal and around the center. Okay. Danielle didn't, okay. <laughs> I'm sure you can trace, Danielle. Like I said, that's, you can't, it, you can't mess it up. You really can't. Because if you really don't, if you really, if you mess up a line, um, then just, then just wait a little while and scrape it off and redo it. Do you need to clean the tips for you? Oh, no, absolutely not. Um, we will clean them. They, they, especially once the, um, once the, once it dries. Jen, did you put the yellow tips on that I gave you? Cause you know, these are like the thinnest, this gives the thinnest line possible. Um, did you remember to put a, put a tip on? 
um, because that's what I did all my little ones. The, the, the bowl that I had at the studio, that's all done with liner bottle and yellow tips. When do we bring it to get fired? And do we turn all the paints along with the squeeze bottle? Um, paints you can keep um, in case you ever grab any other pottery or anything like that. Um, we don't put it back in the in the um, in the bottles, so you guys can hold on to that for future projects. Um, the only thing I ask you to bring back is the writer bottle and the tips. Um, and whenever is convenient, we are at the studio seven days a week from eleven to five. Oh no, yeah, Danielle, you got to go all the way. Don't just don't do, don't just outline the edge. You got to create petals. You got to come to your center, or else it is going to look funny. You got to you got to come down all the way to your center with the lines. So you know each petal you want to wherever your center is. You want to make sure that each each and every petal is completely lined with black, not just not just out here. It will look funny if you just have it out here. Okay, so you got to go. You got to carry that line all the way to the center. Are you squeezing too hard, Jen? Why are you ending up with a thick line? If, you, if the lines are too thick, okay, honestly, if the lines are too thick, let it dry till tomorrow. Take a whatever, I, like your nail, take the, the uh, a tweezer, whatever. Scrape the black away, touch up the white, and redo the black. This is my suggestion. Anything else? Do we think we're good? All right. Um, all right, so I think I'm gonna sign off, but if y'all have any questions, just send me a message in Messenger. Um, and I will gladly answer anything that has not been answered to this point. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, and y'all have a good night. Stay safe. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Bye.